talk about the process of milling four square, and that's the process of taking something like this, rough lumber, and turning it into this, a piece of wood that we can use to do fine joinery on. For any type of woodworking, it's really important that we start out with something that's flat, it's the correct thickness, it's the correct width, and it's the correct length, and all done very accurately. Usually we start with rough lumber, because it gives us a lot of flexibility. You can buy lumber that's already been surfaced for you. For example, you can buy lumber that's surfaced on two sides only, but it's left uh, with a rough width. That's called S2S, surface two sides. You can also buy it like this, which we did. Um, this is called S4S, where it's surfaced on all four sides, these two sides and the tops and bottoms, and that's called surface four sides. And then you can get it in various lengths. You're going to pay a lot more for this because somebody's already done the processing for you. You're going to pay a little bit less for S2S. And S2S typically comes a little bit thicker than three quarters of an inch. But that can present a problem because we often need to bring our wood down to about three quarters of an inch. And the S2S is often, say, 13 sixteenths. That's only an extra sixteenth above what we need. But if you look at this piece, you can see that it's not, uh, it's not very flat. It's sitting off the, the bench, oh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch even more. For me to flatten this, I would have to take off a fair bit of material. And I might not have three quarters of an inch left um, after that operation. So it doesn't necessarily save me a lot of money buying something that's already surfaced unless I'm willing to live with a board that's not very flat, which means I can't do the type of joinery that I might want to do. So what we usually do is buy it in the rough. And this happens to be four quarter, which means it's just over, it's four quarters thick, just over an inch in thickness. That gives me over a quarter of an inch to play with uh, to get this flat, because it's, it's most certainly not flat, as you can see here. But I got plenty of room to make it flat. I can buy my rough lumber in, comes in random widths and lengths. I can get it uh, any particular width. It might be skinnier at one end, fatter at the other end. It might be 10 foot long, it might be 12 feet long, it might be any particular length or width. Here we have a very wide board. So before I can start working with this, I need to get it down to a manageable size. And the steps that we go through to get from here or here to here is six different steps. The first step is rough cutting to length and width, if necessary. And what I mean by if necessary is if I uh, needed to do a uh, board, oh, this wider, a little bit wider, and my rough board was already like this, I would probably leave it just at this width. There's no really re uh, reason to go through the extra step to cut it any narrower. However, if I started with this board, I wouldn't necessarily want to have to flatten this whole thing. So what I would do is rough cut it to width, probably on the bandsaw because that's the safest tool in this case because we don't have a straight edge to run against the table saw. And I would cut it down a little closer to what I need. Not exactly what I need because I still have to have room to straighten it and rip it to width later. Cutting it uh, to rough length, uh, if I had to get a board about this long, I wouldn't necessarily start with a board this long. That would be kind of wasteful. So I would cut it down to rough length, uh, probably on the chop saw, the radio arm saw, something like that. This does another thing for me as well. Any time that I open up the middle of a board, it's going to release moisture in that board, which is going to cause it to want to move a little bit, twist maybe, warp a little bit. So by Cutting it down to rough width, that starts releasing that moisture, and I might let it sit around the shop for a day or so, like that, to get it to move to where it wants to be uh, after it releases that moisture. It also makes it a more manageable size to deal with. This is much easier to flatten than a board this length. So I want to get things as small as I, as I can, get them as close to size as I can. Uh, one other thing that it uh, does for me as well, some wood has a natural tension in it. When you cut it, it releases the tension. You may have experienced this on the table saw when you're ripping and the board starts doing this as it comes off the blade, or maybe it pinches the blade. 
that's releasing a little bit of tension in the wood. If that's, if that's too severe, it's not necessarily wood we want to use. So by ripping it down to rough width, I might see that the wood is doing that, and I might choose not to use it uh, because it's going to cause me problems down the road. So I want to make sure, though, that I don't try to cut this too close. If I, uh, if I need a board this wide to finish, I'm going to cut it a little bit wider, maybe a half inch to three quarters of an inch, to give me some room to straighten this edge later. And I'm also going to cut it a little longer than what I need, because we'll talk about later, planers, when we thickness this, do something to the ends of the board called snipe. And that's just a little bit of a dip in the wood at the very end. Planers do that to a different degree. Our planer happens to snipe about three inches from the end of the board. So I'm going to leave maybe another four inches on each end so that I can cut that off later and not have a board that's got a little bit of a dip on the end. So once I've got a rough cut board down to the size that I need, the rest of the steps are, step number two is flattening a face. So the first thing I have to do, because we can see this board is not even remotely flat, is I have to get a flat surface that's a reference surface to go through the planer. If I don't have a flat surface going through the planer, it's going to come out, uh, and the board's warped or twisted, it's going to come out warped or twisted on the other end of the planer. So once we have a flat reference face, we're going to go to the planer and thickness it down to the thickness that we want. In our case, it's going to be 3 quarters of an inch. And we're going to go back to the joiner and straighten an edge because we need a reference edge uh, to go to the next operation, which is ripping it to width on the table saw. And the very last thing we do is cross cut the ends off both boards so that they're square and the board is the appropriate length that we want. And you can remember this by thinking about we're going to do the uh, faces first, so we're going to flatten the face and thickness the other face. Then we're going to do the edges, we're going to straighten an edge and rip it to width, and the last thing we're going to do is the ends. So it's faces, edges, ends. So the first step, we're going to go out and flatten the face on the jointer. 